Uh, no, not these guys again. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for another top 10 most toxic video game communities. Let me tell you something, legit gamer X, you're f***ing worthless. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we're looking at even more video games that get a bad rep for having particularly toxic fan bases. This toxicity can come through a number of means, including the unwelcoming nature of the online community, the fans, or unacceptable behavior. Just so we're clear, we're not trying to say that all players of these games behave in such a negative manner. Congratulations! Wow, this is an awesome painting! Number 10, Street Fighter Series. <laughs> Fighting games are always going to draw a certain competitive player, but there's a very fine line between competitive and kind of annoying, which is exactly what fans of this series are. If you don't like a certain mechanic, you're a scrub. If you complain about the gameplay and its flaws, you just need to get good because you're a noob who doesn't understand the intricacies of this masterpiece. That's not to mention that the online play is littered with children spouting verbal abuse, lag switchers, rage quitters, and cheap tacticians, like those who spam or just hide in a corner. Granted, this series has always been a bit of a friendship destroyer, so we shouldn't expect too much. I guess you don't know anything, do you? Number 9, RuneScape. I've come across about two people so far, well, three people really, uh, trying to crash me. While the RuneScape community has most definitely improved in the last decade or so, there are still some troubling individuals walking about there. Some of the diehard and elitist players will verbally berate others, sometimes even to the point of severe bullying, and new members can be attacked simply for, you know, being new. The fans have also been known to exploit in-game mechanics for their own personal gain. Why'd you do that? Dude, why'd you do that? The constant whining about the game dying doesn't really help either, especially when the vocal players are so unwelcoming and hostile. While we're sure that most RuneScape players are delightful, and that the toxic ones are just a vocal minority, they're more than enough to make people want to steer clear. Well, that and time commitment. <sighs> he died. Number 8, Sonic the Hedgehog series. Man, for such a cute and harmless rodent, Sonic sure does stir up a lot of controversy. The Sonic games are spread throughout so many years and generations that the fan base has long been splintered and broken, leading to constant infighting, name calling, and general negativity online over which game sucks, why this new mechanic is game breaking, etc., etc. Of course, the inconsistent quality of the titles in recent years certainly hasn't helped ease the boiling pot between trolls and the most diehard of Sonic's defenders both of whom can get quite aggressive with each other. And, uh, hmm, we're not even gonna touch on some of the more adult things that fans often do with these characters. I'm pregnant with your child. What? Actually, it's my child. Number seven, Payday 2. Now I know where you live. I'm gonna have to go ahead and kill your goddamn family. Payday 2 is a stellar game if you play it with a group of friends, or even a group of well-behaved mature adults who don't kick you out over the slightest provocation. Unfortunately for the game and its experience, this is exactly what happens 90% of the time if you play with randoms. You are lucky if you last 30 seconds in some games, as it's incredibly easy to be kicked for being a noob, for not following the predetermined playstyle of the group, for not having certain items, playing poorly, or just any number of things that you could do innocently. Seriously, just get some friends together to play this game, because you'll be lucky to even play if you don't. Good luck, little shithead. Number 6, World of Tanks. That's fucking awesome! World of Tanks is a fairly harmless free-to-play game. You get some tanks, you blow each other up. That sounds like fun, right? Unfortunately, with free games also comes players who pay, and that is where the toxicity starts. The worst aspect of the community is definitely the self-proclaimed professionals. Many players take the game a little too seriously, often resorting to verbally abusing teammates for not playing well or for being less experienced because they haven't forked over hundreds of dollars or hundreds of hours. It seems like you just can't have fun anymore, because there's always bound to be someone who thinks they're the Wayne Gretzky of World of Tanks and deserves to be treated with respect, damn it! Oh, this game is so stupid! Number 5, Five Nights at Freddy's series. It seems that you had some trouble with the keypad. I see what you were trying to type, and I will auto-correct it for you. The Five Nights at Freddy series of games are cool little indie titles that do wonders to scare you with such a limited budget. It's too bad that the rabid community kind of ruins them. While the fans are certainly devout, their annoying nature is definitely kind of off-putting. Some of the more toxic behavior includes the constant and explicit fan art, shipping various characters, always shoving the game down everyone else's throats, the I wanna be an animatronic subgroup, and the constant harassing of poor Scott. Couple this with the fact that most fans seem to range between the ages of 10 and 12, and it's doubly annoying. And, uh, kinda creepy. 
Number four, Super Smash Brothers series. Kaka, why? Kaka, why? Whoa. Kaka, why? You, you conned yourself, man. When the original was released in 1999, everyone was instantly smitten with the game due to its addictive combat, memorable characters, and for its ability to bring friends together and then ruin their friendship. Then esports happened, and that harmless fun soon turned into professional dedication, and its fan base quickly went far too serious for its own good. Oh, shit! What the f <laughs> Some of the professional players are now overly antagonistic to casuals and refuse to play unless the rules are altered to be more competitive, such as by removing items. We hope you like playing on the same map 5,000 times in a row as well. Oh, and uh, God help the person who actually says they think Brawl is the best one. Number three, EVE Online. While many players of this game are friendly and helpful, it's the bad apples that give Eve a rotten name. Some players will treat the inexperienced with total disdain, even to the point of harassment. It's also kind of like the Wild West of gaming. Players will rob, cheat, scam, and screw over others as often as they can in the name of self-fulfillment. However, we can accept behavior like that because it's part of the game, so we can forgive it. What we can forgive is the toxicity that extends beyond the gameplay, such as vandalizing property or urging fellow gamers to harass an allegedly depressed player until they kill themselves. Not cool, fanboys. Not cool. I will leave you alone now and never enter your space again. We told him that Amar space was ours. <laughs> Number two, Roblox. In this game, players are able to design their own virtual worlds and essentially create their own games within them. It sounds interesting, but mm, stay clear, trust us. The game is basically for very young audiences and we know how young audiences can act. While it's inevitable that you'll run into some unsavory or immature characters, there's also the constant friend requests, the classic name calling from seven year olds, and the comment section of the games, which is just a whole bunch of cancerous nonsense, including lots and lots of spam. It wouldn't be so bad if the trolls here knew how to spell or use proper grammar, but come on, this is the internet we're talking about, right? <laughs> what the f I think she took I think she took the daddy thing in a sexual way. Okay. Number one, Grand Theft Auto Online. We've been waiting for this for years, so too bad about the players, eh? While the initial launch was problematic, the game's toxic community has definitely lingered. GTA 5 is full of trolls and griefers, and there always seems to be that one player who's completely incompetent and refused to play along with everyone else. God, fuck you, dude. There's also an extremely bad case of gang mentality, as players will often talk trash to and single out other players simply for not being part of their clique. There are also, of course, screaming kids who will yell profanity the likes of which you have never heard right into your ears. Because, again, this is the internet. F*** you, guy. I'm kicking his ass. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.